Hey folks, I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we're going to look at how we can install and set up Jenkins on a Mac and look at how we can create a very simple pipeline. Now, what is Jenkins? Well, Jenkins is an open source CI CD tool. It basically allows you to build and deploy your software projects automatically. Now, Jenkins might look like a simple system, but in fact, it has hundreds of plugins, which is how it allows you to connect with a bunch of related tech to do all kinds of interesting things in your builds. All right, so now to get on with installation. Now, if you want to install Jenkins on your machine, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. You can do it in Docker. You can put it in Kubernetes if you're running Minikube or some other version of Kubernetes on your local machine. You can run it as a WAR file and you've got other operating systems as well. I'm on a Mac, so we're going to install it for Mac OS. And normally I tend to install things in Docker, but I think in this case, probably the simplest way of doing it is to follow the Mac OS instructions. And we can find those here. All right, so when we want to install, we want to install the LTS version, which is the long-term support version. We don't want to install the weekly version, which could potentially be buggy. So let's just go over to these instructions here. All right, and then we've got some simple instructions which we can follow in our terminal. All right, so these instructions describe how to install Jenkins using a tool called Homebrew. And in my opinion, it's probably the most convenient way to install Jenkins on your Mac. Now, what is Homebrew? Homebrew is just a very simple, easy to use package manager for your Mac. So if you don't have it, I definitely recommend heading over to their website and installing it on your machine. All right, and just to check that we do have it installed, let's just run this command. All right, and that shows us the usage, which means that we've got it installed on this machine. All right, so the first instruction to install Jenkins is brew install Jenkins LTS. So I'm just gonna paste that into here. All right, now that should go ahead and install Jenkins LTS on this machine. LTS, remember, is long-term support. All right, and that's done, it was literally that easy. All right, so the next thing to do is to start Jenkins LTS. So we can do that with this command here. All right, let's run that. And there we go, it started, so we should be able to access it. So now we're gonna try and navigate to the Jenkins URL, which is localhost 8080. Okay, and here we are. Now, the first instruction is to get the initial password when you wanna unlock Jenkins. So it tells you the, the path where you can get that file. So we go back to our terminal. Let's clear that and we can say cat and then the name of that file, which gives us the password. So we'll just copy that and we can paste that in there. All right, here we are. Now it's telling us to customize Jenkins so we can install suggested plugins or we can select plugins to install. So let's just go over here first to quickly have a look. You can see here that there's all kinds of categories where you can select tools from. Some of them are not selected by default. Node.js, for example. Yeah, there's just loads of them. So it might be worth having a look around here just out of interest if you're using Clearcase or Bitbucket, for example. GitHub or GitLab. But in our case, we're just going to go ahead and install the default one. So let's go back and say install suggested plugins. All right. Now you can see that that kicks off the process to start installing various plugins and it can take a few minutes. So let's just see how that gets on. And you can see that you've got things that would be quite common usage. So Gradle, Ant, you've got Git, LDAP, these kinds of things. You've got a mailer, email extension, all that kind of useful stuff. All right, so that's done. So now we can go ahead and create our first admin user so that we'll just call it admin and give it a simple password. So we'll save and continue that. Yeah, we'll leave that with the default and just click save and finish. All right, and we're ready to start using Jenkins. All right, so at this point now you've got an empty Jenkins with no actual jobs created and it's pretty useless without some jobs. So let's go ahead and create a job. Now at this point, you've got a bunch of options. You've got freestyle project, pipeline project, multi-configuration project, etc., etc. Now freestyle project is a basic Jenkins project, but you want to chain steps together in a pipeline fashion usually. 
and this is much better supported in pipelines. You can do it in freestyle projects, but it's just better in pipelines. So the one we're interested in pipeline, so let's just go there and we need to give it a name. So my first pipeline and we've selected this, it just sort of highlights and then we say, okay. All right, now here we have our pipeline configuration. Now we're going to ignore most of this for now. It really depends on what you want to do in your build. And we just want to create a really basic build pipeline as part of this video. So let's just scroll down here. And this is where you add the meat of your build. So the option selected here is pipeline script. You can have a pipeline script or you can have a pipeline script from source code management. Okay. And then you've got some examples here. So you can have a hello world pipeline. You've got a GitHub and Maven pipeline. It just helps you get started and you've got a scripted pipeline. Now, the key thing to note here is that you've got two types of pipeline definitions. You've got declarative and scripted. Now, declarative is the example given here. So it starts with pipeline and it's kind of much more defined way of doing things in Jenkins. It's the later addition to how you can define pipelines in Jenkins. Scripted is the older way, but it's still perfectly viable now. So you can choose whichever way you want to go. Now there's pros and cons of each approach, but it's probably out of the scope of this video to go into detail about which one is more suited to particular scenarios. But let me know in the comments below if that's something you wanna know more about. But to keep things very simple, if you wanna know which one is which, if it starts with the word pipeline, then it's a declarative pipeline. But if it starts with node, then it's a scripted pipeline. All right, so just to create a demo, let's just create a ridiculously simple build that doesn't really do anything other than print stuff out. So let's delete that. Let's delete some of these comments. All of that, all of that, and we'll just put some print statements in there. I remember here you're writing groovy code. Now, obviously this is completely useless other than for demo purposes. So your build will definitely won't look like this, but let's just click apply and save. All right, so now we've got our first pipeline. If you want to get back to the configuration and tweak it, you can do that here. But let's just go ahead and say build. The build gets scheduled and ends up here and you can get the logs by clicking on here. All right, and there we go. Our first build has executed and it succeeded. Obviously it was going to succeed because it's not doing anything other than printing stuff out. So if you click on this icon here, it'll take us straight to the console output. And in the console output, you can see it's printed prep, build and results, which is what we wanted and the pipeline succeeded. All right, so if this was useful, uh, please don't forget to absolutely destroy the like button and to completely annihilate the, su the subscribe button. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below if you use Jenkins, how you use it, and if you want to know more about it. Thank you for watching.